So the first thing they teach you in journalism school is don't be the story. This is ESPN's Rachel Nichols, who became the story at her own behest. Hey, black woman, I just wanted you to know that uh, you're pretty dope. Maria Taylor, seen here, was the brunt of Nichols's ire. They are colleagues at ESPN. Would you need her to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like crappy long time record on diversity, which by the way, I myself like know personally from the female side of it, like go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like you're not gonna find it with me then take my thing away. Nichols, unaware her camera and microphone were on, said this of Taylor. I also don't want to let this moment pass without saying how much I respect, how much I value our colleagues here at ESPN, how deeply, deeply sorry I am for disappointing those I hurt, particularly Maria Taylor, and how grateful I am to be part of this outstanding team. And this was her apology, putting, in my view, Richard Jefferson and Kendrick Perkins in a tough spot. So Nichols is now on the back foot. The network has replaced her at this year's NBA Finals by another fantastic reporter and journalist, Malika Andrews. There is that sense of entitlement. Rachel Nichols' father-in-law dearly departed, a beloved, famed Hollywood director. Her mother-in-law is Diane Sawyer. At some mm. point, she got the job over somebody else who deserved it more. Facts. If you go all the way back to when she first started, people can look at her and say the same thing about her. Something was given to her, maybe given to her, that a lot of people felt like they deserved to have at that particular time. Although she may have been taught not to do so in J school, ESPN's Rachel Nichols made herself the story. Last year in the Orlando bubble, she went off about Maria Taylor taking her place to host NBA Finals coverage on ESPN. The network did not discipline Nichols. In the recording, which was obtained and published by the New York Times, Nichols felt the heat coming her way and voiced her opinion. The problem with this opinion was it came off as Maria got the job because she's a minority and not she's really freaking great at her job and is deserving. You're likely asking how did this recording come about? Simply when in the bubble Nichols was using new technology did not know her camera and microphone were on because when they are the feed is recorded straight to ESPN's headquarters in Bristol, Connecticut. It was effectively the remote pandemic version of a hot mic. You can be mm -hmm. as liberal as you want to be, a freedom fighter, an ally, a real one, take a knee, fist in the air, until they come for what you see is yours, right? The Memphis Grizzlies' as Ja Morant voiced his support for Taylor on social media. Maybe ESPN saw what was ahead. Maybe not. However, Nichols' show, The Jump, was surprisingly taken out of the rotation the night of Game 1 of the NBA Finals. ESPN is the latest example of what is out there every day that every black man and woman who has entered the workforce has been victim of, okay? Another huge issue was LeBron James' advisor, Adam Mendelson, saying to Nichols, I don't know, I'm exhausted. Between Me Too and Black Lives Matter, I got nothing left. Nichols then laughed at it. Mendelssohn has worked for Arnold Schwarzenegger and has a career in politics. He is co-founder of LeBron's More Than a Vote, Taylor did a spot for the group last summer. The main crux, clearly, is the management style at ESPN. Senior producers have told colleagues to leave the company to advance their respective careers. I mean, are we really just gonna forget the all-white crowd bidding on black NFL players? We shouldn't. On a conference call, Taylor spoke of her treatment at the company. Play-by-play -play broadcaster Dave Lamont, thinking he was on mute, went mask off for everyone on the call. He thought it was just a griping session for black employees. It was such a slap in the face, Taylor said in an interview with the Times. When I was in it, that was horrible. But now looking back, it was an awakening moment. This is part of our culture. There are people that feel this way. I think this is really a reflection of a culture that was created um, by ESPN's management. I mean, ultimately, while you certainly can have your criticisms of Rachel Nichols in terms of how she handled it, you can have your criticisms of Adam Mendelson, uh, LeBron's advisor, and what he said um, in his comments. But to me, so much of this rests on the lap of the people in charge.